Hey everyone, I'm Jack Chappell. I upload business and finance videos pretty much every single day. Hit that subscribe button and that like button if you want to see more. Now let's jump into this here. So we have six reasons why you're broke or if you do these six things, you will probably go broke or are broke right now. We're going to go through these right now. So we're going to talk about number one here. Number one, this is why people are broke when they're old. And I hate this. I hate this so, so much because everyone has the opportunity to do this and it is not investing. This is a really simple one, but it's something that people don't do and it frustrates the hell out of me, especially young people who don't invest. They don't invest any of their money in your 20s. Now, so inf let's break this down here. Let's break it down. I'm gonna break it down for you. So inf inflation, if you guys don't know what inflation is, um, it means that the cost of goods goes up two to three percent every single year. So the value of your money erodes by two to three percent per year. Fascinating, right? So this is not so fascinating because what happens is a lot of young people, they will leave their money in their savings or in their checking account where it sits there and you get 0.1% interest every single year. It's not a lot. And so you're, if you leave your money in a savings or checking account, the value of your money erodes by essentially two to 3% every year. Think about that. If you have $10,000 in the bank, and you just let it sit there, you're gonna lose two to $300 of the value of that money every year. So that's the number one thing. So not investing erodes your money. Now, <laughs> this is actually, I don't know what the term for this is, but if you leave your money in the bank, it's like reverse compound interest. <laughs> it's like losing two to 3% per year instead of gaining two to 3% per year. So if you are to invest and reinvest, that is one of the ways where you will not go broke. Let's say you um, invest at a rate of, and you have a good return of 6% per year. That's really standard. If you get 6% per year on your money, you beat inflation by three to 4%. And if you keep reinvesting that money, all of a sudden, over the next three to four decades, you're not gonna be broke. If you invest five to 20% of your paycheck, which is standard, you should, so yeah, you, by the way, you guys need to invest five to 20% of your paycheck. That's what you should be investing at. Whether it's investing in, don't invest in high, in high fee mutual funds, don't do that. Invest in index funds. If you know nothing about the stock market, I'm sure that there's a link for the stock market program in the link below. But invest in like high dividend stocks, stocks that are really safe, stocks that have been around for a long time, and just invest in those. Because all of us, if you, for every hundred dollars you invest over five decades, that can be worth thousands of dollars for every hundred dollars that you invest. So that is what can prevent you from going broke is just simply investing. So not investing is one of the reasons why you're, why you can go broke. So make sure you invest. It's really important. Number two, behind, behind, you have a nice behind, uh, oh Jesus, behind on credit cards. This is one of the reasons why you're broke. So if you, uh, you might get behind on your credit cards once. That sometimes that stuff is out of your control. A lot of the times it is in your control. If you get behind once, you're gonna be behind for a very long time. Cause if you can't pay it back on the first time, you probably can't pay it back on the second time and it's gonna add up. So all of a sudden I've seen cases where, you know, you borrow $500 using your credit card so you spend $500 on your credit card, you can't pay that back, maybe you have an emergency and you can't pay back your credit card. That over time, you might end up paying back $1,000 on that, on your $500 purchase. So I have this saying about credit cards where if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. <laughs> if you don't have $1,000 in your bank, if you, if you only have $500 in your bank, you should only spend $500 maximum with your credit cards. You never spend more than you can pay back. And if you get behind once, that's one of the reasons you're gonna go broke. So just because you have a $1,000 credit limit doesn't mean you should spend $1,000 using your credit card. I have a $10,000 limit on mine. I, pay, I don't know if I've ever had more than like $300 in like, uh, I guess maybe I bought some stuff on Amazon though, which is maybe a thousand bucks, but I pay it off right away. 
And that's what you guys need to do too. One of the reasons why you're broke is because you're using credit cards. Actually, there's this interesting psychological study where um, there, there's this order of, of willingness to spend your money. So it's hard to explain. So if you use a credit card and you swipe it and it's $100, your brain doesn't get a negative response from that. It's like, it's someone else's money, so I'm not that angry, I'm not that scared, I'm not that frustrated. All right, all right, I don't feel that pain of losing money. If you use a debit card, you get slightly more pain after you make a $100 purchase. So you're more likely to regret, you're more likely to not spend as much when you use your debit card. Because it's like, oh my God, like I'm actually losing this money out of my account. Now, the best way for you to spend less is to actually use cash. Because all of the receptors in your brain start firing off of like, don't do this, this sucks, this person's taking our money. So you're likely to spend much less money if you pay cash than if you are to use debit or credit cards. Really interesting. So if it, that could be a psychological trick that might work for you, is try to actually use cash. And so that'll prevent you from getting behind on your credit cards and it might actually make you spend less in the long run. So that's, that's interesting. You, might, you guys might want to try that. Number three. Number three is stupid loans. This goes really close to um, credit cards because credit cards are essentially a loan, right? I don't know if you guys know that. It's essentially a loan. And if you get behind on the payment, you have to pay more than the principal amount. So student loan or stupid loans, <laughs> well, student loans are stupid sometimes. Um, but the main stupid ones are auto loans. So I always see people, I know I listen to Dave Ramsey sometimes, and he has these callers call in. They make $30,000 a year, and they buy a $30,000 uh, $30, car, and there's no down payment. You're essentially taking out a loan for a depreciating asset that is worth as much as a year of your income, before tax income. Isn't that stupid? Don't do that. That's, get a, if you're making 30 grand a year, get a beater. If you need a car, get a freaking $8,000 a year beat up car has 50,000 miles on it and just go crazy, right? And that's what you should be doing. Don't get an auto loan. Oh, those are, the auto loans piss me off right now actually because it's, they're, they're essentially like the subprime mortgage of 2017 where anyone can get an auto loan because, because it's not a lot of money. $30,000 is not a ton of money. Uh, all those lenders are willing to lend you the money because the payments every month are only going to be a couple hundred bucks. It's just stupid. And they'll, or they're preying on people that are stupid with their money, which is, I don't know, that just frustrates the hell out of me. We're going to move on here. The other loan to stay away from is payday loans. I talk about this all the time. Payday loans, do not use them unless you have like a life and death emergency. That's the one time you should take out a payday loan. Go through all other options. Sell everything in your house. If you need 500 bucks, sell your TV, sell this, that, cut out cable, anything but a payday loan. Because that is where you get into the crazy amounts of money where if you take out $500, you, and if you don't pay it back right away, that $500 can easily become several thousand if you don't pay it back right away. So that is the one loan which I always say, just that's a last case scenario. Don't take out those loans. That'll make you go broke. That'll make you go broke. We're gonna move on here to, um, let's see, happiness. That's what we're gonna do. Happiness, oh, whoops, over finances. I should say it's temporary, uh, temporary happiness, I should say. So, oh, I just colored on myself. Temporary happiness. So this is, I'll do the one for girls and, and then the one for guys. So girls, the big killer is buying clothes makes them happy. That's the, one of the biggest stupid expenses for, for females out there. Buying useless clothes is once a month, that's gonna make you go broke. You do not need new clothes every month. Go get clothes once a year, that's it. Couple hundred dollars, you're probably the same size you were last year, so you don't need to get new stuff. It all still fits. It all still fits, ladies. So don't get 
don't buy stupid stuff for temporary happiness. Just because it makes you feel good for getting new clothes and that whatever you think that John at the office is going to notice you. I mean, or maybe it's a lot of the times people actually, women actually buy clothing to impress their female friends, which is funny. Um, because they want that, that dopamine release of when someone's like, oh, I like your shirt. I like your dress. I like your pants. And for guys, this expense can be through a lot of things. Some people, uh, for guys, it can be paying way too much for cable. That happens actually a lot still. People are still using cable. Um, for it's, guys usually make bigger stupid purchases though. For guys, it's like a motorcycle or a car. Like the giant auto loan that we were talking about before, guys are more likely to do that. They aren't likely to do the, um, the, the, uh, the close once a month. They're more likely to make the one dumb purchase a year that'll reg that they'll regret for years and years and years. But yeah, so people are willing to put temporary happiness of that purchase ahead of long-term finances. So instead of buying that $10,000, or sorry, $15,000, $20,000 car or motorcycle, invest it. Instead of buying $100 worth of clothing every three weeks, save it, invest it. That'll prevent you from going broke, I guess. It should help. Now, number five, this is one that really can kill people, that can make people go bankrupt, and that is uh, too much housing. This is a big one. I mean, I love real estate, but people over leverage themselves. So for those of you that don't know, 34% of your take home income, that is the maximum amount you should be spending on housing. If you want to be financially comfortable. And it should be closer, I know Dave Ramsey says 25%, but 34% is generally what banks look at, 34%. So if you're taking home three grand a month, then your housing cost should only be $1,000 maximum. Fair, right? And so whatever that is. People think that if you make three grand a month, you can do $1,500 in housing for rent. That's half of your income. Don't do that. That's stupid. You're going to go broke. Don't do that. Um, we're going to move on to number six here. Number six and the last one is uh, don't, is actually I should say not. Oh, I messed that up. Not tracking expenses. This is a big one. Oh, okay. We're going to erase that N there. There we go. N. So this is important for a few things. For, we're going to talk about hidden fees. So hidden fees that get deducted from your bank account. So there's a lot of things here. Hidden fees can be from bank stuff. So every time there's certain accounts that you'll open where every time you deposit something or every time you withdraw something, the bank will take a cut of that. We'll take maybe a couple bucks or a buck or a few percentage points of whatever you withdraw, whatever you deposit. It could be from your mutual fund. Um, so this can be from, if you invest in a mutual fund, they could have a lot of hidden fees. In fact, I was reading Tony Robbins' book, and he said that the average mutual fund takes away 3% of your investment every year. 3% in hidden fees. These are transaction fees. These are management fees. These are um, uh, tax fees. There's, they actually charge you for, for the taxes that they pay as a company. So hidden fees are a big one not knowing where those, fees are, where those fees are coming from. So whatever you spend money on, whatever you invest in, make sure you know where all the fees are going and keep those low as possible. 3% per year in a mutual fund, that's insane. Absolutely insane. That's ludicrous. I would never even come close to that investment. But yet, most people in America do that. When they invest through their company, through their company to get into a mutual fund or a long-term investment program, they don't know a lot of these fees. They're just like, oh, that's good. That looks good. These are your returns before all the fees. That's what the banks do and what mutual funds do. They'll show you the returns you get before they deduct the fees out of your account. Hidden fees are big for banks, for investing, anything like that. Now, um, another thing too is like <laughs> hidden expenses you don't know about. So <laughs> I've seen so many people like, actually, I'll tell you my story. I'll tell you mine. So my hidden fee was actually, um, I had $90 deducted from my account like two months, three months ago. I was like, to be $90 isn't too much to me, right? So it's, um, I looked at it and I was like, where is this coming from? Where did that come from? And it was, I still signed up for Amazon Prime. <laughs> and like, I probably would have signed up for it anyways, 
but I didn't know that I was signed up for it, and that's on me. That's on me. And this could be for you, it could be a gym membership. It could be for a site you signed up for a year ago, and it's a subscription base and you got charged again. For me, actually what happened once now, there's two things that have happened by accident for me for hidden expenses. One was the Amazon Prime. Like, that's okay, I was gonna use that anyway. The second one I was gonna use anyway too, I was signed up for this site called Video Blocks, and I still am, and it's a bunch of stock video, which I'm actually gonna teach you guys how to make money using stock video, uh, hopefully this week. But, um, um, so pretty much that site charges like, I think it was $100 a year or $200 a year, something around those lines. And I got a random charge about how my subscription renewed for the same amount, for $100, $200. And you know, luckily I was still using it, so it's worth it to me. But again, that's my bad. I didn't know that I was still signed up for that. So make sure you know where your money's going. Or, because most people, you know, $200, you know, I'm lucky where I'm in a situation where that, that doesn't mean too much to me. I mean, I'm $200 is still like, I mean, I shouldn't say it's not too much. I don't want to be like that because it is still $200 is still $200. But I mean, you know, I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of savings and investings and have a really good income. And for a lot of people out there, $200 is the difference between them being able to pay rent or not pay rent. Um, so making sure you track that stuff, that's really, really important. And I think uh, that's where I'm gonna end this video off. So um, what do you guys think? What are, these are just six reasons that I, sometimes I talk about, sometimes I don't. I have more, I have one other similar video like this from a few months ago, but these are some different points I wanted to put in. So what do you guys think? Anything I missed here? And shameless plug, go check out my Wealth Accelerator program in the link below. It has to do with uh, teaching you how to build side businesses and, and your thought process about money. And it's really interesting. Uh, eight hours of content. You're going to want to check that out. Anyways, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people. I'll see you guys in the next video.